been talking about healing for the last several weeks, and so we're kind of wrapping up that series on healing. And so we want to look at this morning's message. We're going to open our Bibles to Exodus chapter 15 and look at verse 26. By the way, this picture, isn't that a stunning picture? Gorgeous. I took that picture with my iPhone from a boat in Kauai with Mike and Susan Rawls. Do you recognize that picture? Do you all recognize that picture? Yes, <laughs> that was when we were on that boat. I remember the food, by the way, more than anything. <laughs> there was a whale jumping or something, but I remember the food. But it was a beautiful place, and uh, we're going to be praying for them a little bit later on and when we get up there in the fellowship hall and, and do all that. And how exciting. Anybody want to climb into one of their suitcases and sneak over the boat? <laughs> They charge per weight, so just gotta let you know when you go to the airport, put your luggage on that scale. So yeah, some of us fly with you. Exodus fifteen twenty six was all about healing, so this message sort of I'm hoping to just sort of wrap up everything that we've talked about. Talk about so many different things about healing and so we kind of kind of bring it all wrap it up together in a nice package you know the, the message of healing is always part and parcel of the gospel you can't separate the good news of Jesus Christ of salvation without talking about healing they go hand in hand they just can't be separated you, know, you talk about healing you have to talk about salvation when you talk about salvation you talk about healing because the same authority and power that flows through Jesus Christ to save you and deliver you is the exact same power and authority which is why so often you know he would tell somebody hey just get up and walk or you're healed and sometimes he will tell them your sins are forgiven they're like wait a minute he's sick how come he didn't pray for them or lay hands on them he would just tell them no your, your sins are forgiven because sometimes that those things were connected and whenever sometimes the, the Lord heals us he also forgives our sins, and other times he forgives our sins and heals us because they go hand in hand and they go together. Exodus 15, 26. If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you all any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord. The original says, I am Jehovah Rapha. The Lord your healer. I am the Lord that heals you. I am the Lord that heals you. But it's not just healing you when you're sick. It's keeping you in health. Keeping you in wholeness. Keeping you well. So all, when we look at God's word and everything that God has for us in healing. It's not just about God just showing up and, and miraculously healing you from something. That's great. We love that. How many of God has done that for you at one time or another? God has healed you of something. And we thank God for that. But you know, God, God has a way of doing something that is different than what we expect, right? God is always going to surprise us. So in the summary for this morning, to remind us of the ways that God heals and the importance of the healing ministry of the church, particularly the prayer ministry. There are three guys fishing in a lake one day when Jesus walked across the water and joined them in the boat. When the three astonished men had settled down enough to speak, the first guy asked humbly, Jesus I've suffered from back pain ever since I took shrapnel in the Vietnam War. Could you help me? Of course, my son, Jesus said. He leaned over, touched the man's back, and he felt relief for the first time in years. The second guy, who wore very thick glasses and had a hard time reading and driving, asked if Jesus could do anything about his poor eyesight. <clears throat> Jesus smiled, removed the man's glasses, and tossed him into the lake. When they hit the water, the man's eyes cleared, and he could see everything distinctly and beautifully. When Jesus turned to the third man, the guy put out his hands. He said, wait, please don't touch me. I'm on, the, I'm on a disability pension. I don't want to lose it. There's some truth in there somewhere, I think. The first thing we want to look at is that God is the healer. Amen. God is the healer. He's designed your body, in fact. He designed our bodies when he created us to heal themselves. 
Sometimes we need help, right? Sometimes we need help. But He's designed our bodies to, to bring healing, right? And so we, we're thankful for that because God desires healing and wholeness because He is the God, our healer. We're all familiar with the story uh, in Exodus when God delivered the Israelite people from slavery. They fled Egypt. And then the Egyptian army was at their back. They arrived at the Red Sea. And, you know, Moses picks up his staff. You've seen the movie, right? The Ten Commandments. The, the sea opens up, and they march through. And then when the enemy tries to come in, he picks up his staff, and the sea closes, and they're gone. Well, three days later, after this amazing miracle, they've been walking now in the wilderness for about three days, but they've not had any water to drink. And so they are thirsty, and now they're starting to murmur, and they're starting to complain. And they do come across a body of water, but it's bitter, and it's undrinkable. They can't drink it. So they start to complain and, and cry, and some of them want to go back to eat. I mean, they're just in despair. <laughs> After only three days, right, of having been set free. Amazing. <clears throat> so God tells Moses, I want you to throw a certain kind of stick into the water and make it good to drink. So he does that, and the water is good to drink. It is at that, in this occasion... It is in this occasion you're going to give me some water to drink? Is there something in there? <laughs> it's bitter water. It was bitter. It did not touch this man of God's lips and now it's sweet. There you go. There's something in there. So he threw in a stick The water was good to drink. Right after that we read the scripture. If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord, the God who heals you. God revealed himself with a special name, a special designation as God, their healer. That God was able to protect them. God was able to feed them. God was able to take care of them. God was just not just their provider, not only their savior, not only their deliverer, their rescuer. But now he's showing up. He says, listen, I will heal you if you turn to me. Because I, he, when it's in his nature, God in his nature, you, you could not be in the presence of God and be sick. You know, because God just exudes healing. Everything gets straightened out in his presence. Because it, it's in his nature. But we live in a world that is hurting and broken, pain, suffering, whether it's physical pain, maybe cancer or arthritis. Some suffer from emotional pain, like the loss of a loved one or divorce or a job loss. Or maybe it's from the spiritual pain of being separated from God because of our sin and the mistakes that we have made. And sometimes, oftentimes, a lot of these pains overlap in our lives. You know, we're, we're physically sick, we're also spiritually sick, and sometimes one affects the other. If we're mentally sick or emotionally sick, it can make us physically sick, right? right. If, you, if you're under a lot of stress, come on now. Yes. You've been to the doctor and you've got some, something's hurting and the doctor tries to figure it out. He finally comes back. I've had that happen, by the way. He comes back in and then he'll sit down and look at you and say, okay, what's going on in your life? Right. What's that got to My pain is back here. No, no, no. Tip, what's going on in your life? How, how are things at work? You ever had that, right? The doctor comes in, how are things at work? What's that in your business? Well, you're paying me to make it my business, so tell me what Because they'll tell you, like my mother always said, es estrés. <laughs> es estrés. Stress. You're stressed, you're worried, you're anxious. And so it makes you physically ill. So a lot of the pains and, and things that we suffer because... They are overlapping. Richard Foster in his book, Finding Prayer, Finding the Heart's True Home, he says this, God cares as much about your body, about the body, as he does the soul, as much about the emotions as he does the spirit. The redemption that is in Jesus is total, involving every aspect of the person, body, soul, will, mind, emotions, yes. spirit. Yes. He is a complete healer and a complete deliverer. It is through redemption of Jesus that God brings total healing. Isaiah 53, verses 5 and 6. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. All of us have strayed away like sheep. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord has laid on him the guilt and sins of us all. First Peter repeats it a little bit. In 1 Peter 2, 24, he, Christ himself, bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. For by his wounds 
you have been healed. But what wounds is he talking about? I've heard people say that he's talking about spiritual wounds, that he tore down the spiritual walls that separate us from God. That is true. But he also came to heal us from physical ailment. It's all Amen. part and parcel. It's all, it's a package deal. He didn't just want to come and save you from your sins. He wants you to live a life of wellness and wholeness and health and love and, and joy and laughter. He wanted you to enjoy life. Jesus said it himself. I have come that you might have life abundantly. That's what he said. That you might have life abundantly. You can't have an abundant life if you're hurting everywhere. If you're struggling, if you're in pain, right, emotional or physical. So God wants to heal us and deliver us from all these issues because God works in many shapes and in many forms. So I want to talk about three distinct ways that God heals, God's healing ways. There are three distinct ways. And I believe the, the first one is really, to me, I think is the most important one, okay? The first one, to me, is the most important one. Uh, there's a quote, an ounce of prevention... Who knows the rest of that? Okay. Some of y'all don't know it or what? <laughs> An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Now, going back to Exodus, God was telling them right there in Exodus 15, 26. He says, if you follow my commands and decrees, if you follow my commands, in degrees. In Psalm 119, verse 93, he says, I will never forget your commandments, for you have used them to restore my joy and health. Wait a minute. God's commandments can bring you joy and can bring you health. We're talking about being healthy, but now we're saying, you know, that health, healthy living is found in God's word. And he's saying this back in Exodus. In the Old Testament, he's telling them, listen, if you follow my instructions, Follow my directions and my commands. You're going to have good health. In other words, he's telling them, listen, I'm setting the tone through my word and through my commands. That if you live by them, you're not going to have to need divine intervention for healing and deliverance. <laughs> because we're going to stop it from ever happening. Right? So if we can stop you from ever getting sick, how many of you would sign up for that? Yeah. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's in the Word. Amen. If you get in the Word, His Word is life. His Word is health. The reason that God gave us the Old Testament is to help us understand that there are rules to be lived by. And if we follow those rules, it's not that God is a, a killjoy and He doesn't want you to have joy or try kind of all this kind of weird stuff. God is trying to keep you on the path of prevention so that you never get sick in the first place because He doesn't want you to be sick in the first place. And wouldn't you rather have that, not ever have to need divine healing? I'm, I'm glad we have that. Right. But I would rather not ever have to be in that position where I absolutely need God to heal me. Yeah, no, right? Yes. I'd rather not have to use it. Thank you. It's like insurance. I'd rather not have to use it. It's nice to have it, but I'd rather not have to use it. So many of God's laws are a means of promoting wholeness and health among His people to keep them safe. In a time they, before they knew about germs, right? Before they knew about germs or disease or psychology or anything else. So God had laws about food. He had food laws. And so he told his children, these are certain kind of animals you can't eat. You know, stay away from this. Well, why? Because we, we know now, we understand, if you keep eating a lot of this stuff that he told them not to eat, they're going to end up sick, Right? You keep eating a lot of pork. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Yeah. She said that. I didn't say that. She said you start looking like a pork. Look like porky pig. Start fogging up those arteries. You got to lay off a little bit, right? Got, 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 to, got to back up a little bit. So there's certain things that we know that we're not supposed to do. But God was telling them this way before we had the understanding that we do now. So his food laws were to help keep the people healthy. In other words, he's given them preventative medicine ahead of time. Listen, if you do this, you won't need to be delivered from this stuff. So he gave them food laws. He also gave them instructions on what to do with skin diseases, how to find cleansing. Uh, how many 
have done, you've read your Bible all the way through, and you remember somewhere in the Old Testament where he talks about mold in a house. Yeah. And it just goes on and on. And if you've got mold growing in a house, dig the bricks out and wait so many days and, and then put the bricks back. And, then, you know, if the mold comes back, tear down the hole. I mean, it's just this, you're just reading this in the Old Testament. You're going, what in the world? But then after we've had a hurricane, and, and what is, we know we live in a hurricane zone, take out the sheet rock, dry out the wood, get the fans out, get the mold out, spray everything with bleach. I mean, we've got this whole system now. You see, God was way ahead of us. This is almost 6,000-year-old instructions that we're reading in the book of Exodus and Leviticus and Deuteronomy where he's telling them these things because he was wanting to prevent sickness from ever getting a hold of them. Then he has a moral law. He had food laws. He had laws about sickness and disease and so forth. But he also had a moral law. And he said, don't do this and don't do that. You're right. Don't, don't covet your neighbor's wife. Don't, don't have same sex stuff. Why? He was telling them he was trying to avoid some serious issues. Reducing sexually transmitted diseases. God was trying to create a standard of holiness for his people because he's wanting them to stay healthy. He's wanting us to stay healthy so that you never are in pain and you never are sick. Now, here's the problem that we have. Okay. I'm going to tell you, we, we rebuke demons all day long. We rebuke that demon, right? Rebuke that demon. We get sick and we're, we're just cursing the devil and everybody else. We're shouting down the mountain. We're praising it down. We're, we're, doing, we're quoting scriptures. I'm gonna t can I tell you who the biggest demon, who the biggest problem, who the biggest enemy of your health is? Any, anybody want to know what the, who the biggest, the biggest enemy of your health? The pizza man. It's not the pizza man. It's the guy who ordered the pizza. With extra pepperoni and extra cheese. Or you ordered the kitchen sink from Zio's. Boy, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's from Gio's. Yeah. The kitchen sink. The kitchen sink, baby. Anybody else order the kitchen sink? I have. I know. <laughs> Am I making you hungry yet? Oh, we got a lot of good food back there. Listen, the biggest devil is ourselves. Right? When you sit around that dessert table and you start rebuking them calories, <laughs> pray these, let's pray these calories out. And Jesus would say to you, these calories do not come out but by prayer and fasting. <laughs> That's how you get rid of them calories. Don't ever put it in your mouth. So we go to the doctor. You know, I've told you this story. I went to the doctor having some knee problems this years ago, and I went to the doctor, and uh, you know he. Whatever, and then he says to me, You know, if you lose a few pounds, uh -oh. Uh -oh. I didn't come here to be insulted. Uh -oh. <laughs> you know, I didn't pay you money to walk in, to be insulted. Yeah. That's what he says to me. I really, I was like, Look at me, I'm not, come on. I'm not overweight. Listen, he says, a few, Five pounds. If you lose five pounds, then he goes through this whole long explanation by every time you put your foot down, that extra five pounds, blah, 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 blah. I didn't hear nothing. I saw the donuts disappearing. <laughs> the desserts going away. Then I had another doctor not too long ago said, you know, she, she was serious. She had some kind of heart, you know, just checking your heart and going, you know, just welfare checkup. And doctor comes in and says, you know, if you'll cut your desserts in half. <laughs> That's what she says to me. Now you're down to four. I can still see my feet. What are you talking about? That's what I'm talking about. In half. Yeah. In half. That's what she says to me. I tried it. It didn't work. I ate the first half. And then I ate the second half. And then I ate the second half. <laughs> Nothing happened. It just made it easier to right. eat. And how many have those shakes? You, you know, you're supposed to take a shake. Uh, the, uh, the, the I don't know what they call those. The, uh, Slim fast. Slim fast. I had somebody tell me, I've tried those things. They don't work. I said, what happened? He said, I was having one before every meal. They just weren't working. <laughs> I said, I think you're good. You're supposed to have it in place of the meal. You're just having it with the meal? Yeah, with the meal. So the biggest enemy of our own health and wellness is the person that's in the mirror in the morning. <laughs> it's that person there. And just like we ignore the doctor's advice, we often ignore God's advice. 
to take care of this body, to eat right. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Here we go. And we're having potluck today. Here we go. Shall we ask for forgiveness now? Yes, yeah. yeah, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> we brought some stuff this morning. Dear God, heaven, heal it. Heal it. Heal it. <laughs> Help us, Jesus, this morning. The second thing God uses, and I thank God for this every day, God uses modern medicine Amen. and medical Hallelujah. treatment. Now, yeah. you, you, every one of us here knows that the medical profession is not the end-all and be-all, and they don't have all the answers. Yeah. In fact, they're practicing on you, which is why they call it practicing medicine. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Because every one of our bodies reacts differently to the same thing. <laughs> right? And so they're going to try different things on you, and thank God. You know, I'm going to tell you that uh, there have been some miracles in miracles in medicine. Yeah. And thank God for those miracles. We have, in our day and age, pretty much eradicated polio right. yeah. through vaccination. Yes. Like measles. measles. The bella, the mumps. I mean, the list goes on and on. Amen. God gave somebody wisdom, yes. and 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 through that wisdom of some some vaccine or a pill, they didn't just heal one person; they healed millions, literally millions, saved millions of lives. So we thank God for good doctors and good medicine. Even in the Scripture, in Second Kings chapter twenty, verses one through seven, is the story of, about King Hezekiah who became deathly ill. Isaiah shows up, tells him, you're going to die, get your house in order. Isaiah starts to cry, prays to God, say, God, please, you know, give, spare me. And God says, okay, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to heal you. But then Isaiah comes back. He tells Isaiah, go back, tell him I'm going to give him 15 more years. But then Isaiah says this in verse 7. Make an ointment from figs. Anybody have a fig tree? I, I know the end makes some... Awesome fig gel. He really does. That's some good stuff there. It ain't good for you though. But I hadn't thought about putting it on a, on a wound or something. Yeah. Not me either. Oh. What? Might have tried that. Rub it on my head, maybe it'll grow hair. Who knows? We <laughs> <laughs> got a fig tree, man. They're huge like yeah. this. And they're so good. But you know, the Lord tells his prophet, he says, tell them to make an ointment of figs and to put it on the boil. And the Bible says that Hezekiah recovered. And I thought, well, why didn't God heal him instantly? Don't know. For whatever reason, God has his reasons. God decided in this particular reason, in this particular way. And sometimes God heals us. Thank God for healing, divine healing. And sometimes God uses medicine. And, you know, we've got to go get x-rays and CT scans and MRIs and uh, good health care workers and doctors and good medicine. And we thank God that many times they're able to cure, you know, they're able to cure different forms of cancer through treatment. And there's, there's just so many. I mean, we'd be here all day talking about all the things that medicine can help us with. Right? And, and we thank God for doctors and nurses and health care workers. God bless you guys. Yeah. And, you know, I, I consider them co-laborers with God. They're working with God in the process of your body being healed. We, you know, thank God for our doctors and our nurses and all the people involved in the medical profession. Thank God for them. And God uses them as a partner together. Pray for your patients. Pray for them. Pray that they'll listen to the advice you're giving them. <laughs> okay? And, and we thank God for good medical treatment. We have to be careful that we don't see it as a God, that we don't look at medicine as a God. There's another scripture in the Old Testament where the King Asa was sick, and he went. He had a disease in his feet. And the Bible says he sought for medical treatment far and wide. And God spoke to one of his prophets, and he says, you go tell him, go rebuke him, and tell him, you've gone far and wide looking for medical treatment, but you've not come to me. Wow, no. That's right. So God takes it very personal. Yes. Right? So I think it's we work in conjunction with all those things. See the doctor, but take care of yourself and then pray as well. Yes. But they're not, you know, you're, you don't have to separate. You know, we had this idea years ago, I think, that you know, if you if you went to the doctor, you didn't have enough faith. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. We should go to the doctor. We should still pray, right? Yeah, yeah, we should pray and pray for the medicine to work and pray that they find the right diagnosis and yeah. pray they know how to treat it and you know, pray that you have the discipline, right? The discipline to do what the doctor has asked you to do and to cut out that stuff that you're not supposed to be doing. So we thank God for those good things. The third thing, of course, is what we've been really focusing on, I think, these last almost 10 weeks. Oh, Sam preached a wonderful message uh, from the Old Testament where God told him, you're a little bit chunky. 
Chubby. 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 Sort of like chubby kids or something. It's just, it's sort of a cute thing. But I was waiting for him to say, and you're chubby, and you're chubby, and you're chubby. He didn't have to say that the Holy Spirit was telling him that. And that's, that's what we're talking about, having that personal discipline. But God brings healing through miracles, and, and you know, we've had... Uh, Esther and Jenny and myself, we've shared about miracles of healing. Uh, Esther is a miracle. Yes. Uh, her baby, Eliana, is a miracle. Yes. Uh, you know, when the doctor said you're going to lose her, we said, no, you, no, she's not. Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah. No, she's not. No. Right? And Esther was very, very ill. And yeah. She has a whole bag of prescription drugs that she was taking. God healed her of all of that. Yeah. We go to the doctors, but we, we go and ask God for help. And there's a there's a story of Sophia, our granddaughter Sophia, Sam Nestor's older daughter, that was sick. They took her to the doctor. She ended up in the hospital for several days. And she was getting worse. They couldn't find out what it was. And the Lord spoke to them and said, take her home. Yes. And they're like, and the doctors were like, what, what are you doing? I remember that. Take her home. We're doing what God says. Yes. We came to the doctors. They can't find anything. They just keep giving her more stuff. She's getting worse. We're going to take her home. Against the doctor's advice. They took her home. Next day, she's fine. Yes. Yeah. Like, what just happened? No, no. Just listen to God. Listen to God. We thank God for medicine. We thank God for yes. doctors. But we put, always put our faith in God yes. first and Amen. foremost yes. to lead us and to guide us. In Luke 4, 40, God brings healing through miracles. At sunset, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Yes. Jesus then later said in John 14, 12, that the time would come when we would do greater miracles than he has done. So he's called us to be healers. He's called us to go out and pray for the sick. We thank God there are people who claim that the age of miracles is over. But I'm telling you, it's not over. The miracles are in this room this yes. morning. There are Hallelujah. lots of testimonies yes. like Esther's. And there are many of you. God has healed you and delivered you and saw you through and lifted you up and put you in the right direction. We thank God. He, Jesus healed the sick. He gave the blind their sight. He gave blind and deaf their hearing. He made cripples to walk again. He cleansed the lepers. He raised the dead. He loved people. He loved people. He had compassion on people. He still has compassion on us and miracles have continued throughout the church age for those people who still believe God will show up when we pray in faith God will show up and we yeah. thank God that he is Jehovah Rapha he is yeah. my yeah. healer yeah. and he is still yeah. healing today Hallelujah. we don't understand why sometimes God does not heal there's a lot of reasons we've examined all of that and as I get ready to close here in a minute a quote by Richard Foster Sometimes we make a faulty diagnosis of the problem and pray, for example, for physical healing when the real need is for emotional healing. Sometimes we neglect the natural means of health, such as a diet, exercise, and sleep. Sometimes we refuse to see medicine as one way God heals. Sometimes we do not pray specifically enough or do not get down to the root problem. Sometimes we are not an adequate conduit for the flow of God's love and power, the faith and compassion in us is not yet sufficiently developed. Sometimes there's sin in our lives that hinders God's work. I don't know why sometimes God heals some and doesn't heal others, but the Bible tells us to pray for those who are sick, to anoint them with all and believe. John Wimber, the originator of Vineyard Church, said it best. He said, my responsibility is to pray. God's responsibility is to heal. If he chooses not to do so, that's his. He's responsible for that. So he's called us, we, we've talked about this, he's called us to be obedient. He's called me to be obedient, to pray for those who are hurting, to pray for the sick, to share the good news and the compassion of love, of the love of Jesus Christ that he has done for us. And, that, and then don't, not worry about the rest. Just pray for them and expect God to handle the rest. Because he's the one backing it up. He is the healer. I'm not the healer. He's the healer. Yes. I'm just a designated, authorized agent. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 You are a designated, authorized agent. We talked about that last week. You are authorized by the Lord Jesus Christ who's been given all authority. And then he sent his disciples out. He told them specifically, go out, yes. preach the gospel, and heal the sick. Yes. And he continues that message to every one of his followers. Go out, share the gospel, and pray for the sick. You are a designated, yes. authorized agent yes. for the Lord Jesus Christ. Our responsibility as Christians is to pray. Our responsibility as a church is to provide prayer for healing. 
Amen.